Special shout out to all our patrons who support the show every week. Head on over to patreon.com slash run, eat, drink podcast and subscribe today for bonus content, special shout outs on social media, and so much more. Patrons, you help keep the run, eat, drink podcast going, and we couldn't do it without you. Not a patron yet? Join us today at patreon.com slash run, eat, drink podcast. You can also support the show by using our brand new Amazon affiliate link anytime you shop on Amazon.com for things like running gear, food, beverages, or anything else the little gray trucks might bring your way. Just go to runeatdrink.net slash Amazon anytime you shop. It costs nothing extra, and it helps us keep the lights on and the bandwidth flowing. Go to runeatdrink.net slash Amazon, and we thank you for your support. Hi, I'm Jeff Galloway, and you are listening to the Run, Eat, Drink podcast. Welcome to the Run, Eat, Drink podcast. We feature destination races from across the country. And after the race, we take you on a tour of the best local food and beverage to celebrate. So whether you are an elite runner or a back of the packer like us, you'll know the best places to accomplish, explore, and indulge on your next runcation. Hey, welcome to episode 226 of the Run, Eat, Drink podcast. I'm your host, Amy. And I am your co-host, Dana. We survived. Oh. We are back. And the title of this week's episode is, We Are Coming to You From... The, the cone, cone of, of cer- absolute certainty. I screwed it up. Let's do it again. The, the cone, cone of, of absolute, absolute certainty. certainty. Yes. <laughs> we are coming to you from not so sunny Southwest Florida, <laughs> no. where for the last um, 17 days or so, we've been recovering from this little thing called Hurricane Ian. I and mean, it's such a small name. Yeah. For such a large thing. A small name for a record-setting storm right? that uh, they're saying is going to be one of the top five in recorded history in the United States. Yes. And we got a front row seat to it, everybody. As did Kelly and Jessica. Yes. And so many of our and friends. And Dan Rams and Nice so Guys many Pizza, Greg and Jovina. We have so many people in the community who went through it with us. And all of you virtually who kind of held us in a in in your arms wherever you were and sent us messages through Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and email and text message, everybody checking in with us and making sure that we were okay. We can't thank you enough. For your support and encouragement, JD from the Extra Mile podcast group reaching out to us too. Just uh, the, uh, the Rise and Run podcast folks checking in, Will Run For checking in. I, I just can't. I think that uh, I think that Kelly and Jessica just got power and water and everything back, and so many people are still in the throes of the storm and just we are our hearts are 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 with you and we know that it has just been devastating here and we're so appreciative of the runcation nation that has been supporting us from everywhere near and far yeah the this is tonight's not going to be a regular format episode so i hope that that's okay we really wanted to to take tonight and talk about the fact that so many of our, our runcation nation are impacted uh, races have been impacted mm-hmm. um, yeah, and that's a very small thing considering that just literally um, four miles as the crow flies from us or you say as the crow flies well in a straight line from our house is four four miles would, would get you to Matt Lachey, Pine Island or yeah. Sanibel Island and the the mm-hmm. barrier islands of Southwest Florida were were absolutely devastated with um, tremendous loss of life. Yes. um, Untold property destruction and literal 
rewriting and redrawing of maps, both yeah. cartographers' maps for for what the land actually looks like, mm-hmm. navigational maps will be being redrawn for months and years to come sure. as recovery efforts are ongoing to to get debris out of navigation lanes and find out what navigation lanes still exist from the storm because actual channels mo- were shifted yes as a result of the storm so um you know we're going to talk a little bit about that tonight as well you know just kind of talking about it from our perspective and, and sharing that with you guys and uh you know, I, I, I'm sure, let me, let me back up. I don't know exactly what the, what the national coverage looked like because for so long we I didn't initially have, I have no idea, cell phone, internet or television to be able to see our local broadcast channels. I believe all but one were knocked out for a time. Mm-hmm. They were resorting to broadcasting on radio and it wasn't until I think 48 hours in, where even at the police department where I work, we were able to restore internet connectivity enough to be able to see all the national coverage. And I know some of the stories now are, are, are getting out yes. and people are, are getting a look at what it looks like. But mm-hmm. really from, from Naples to Tampa is what was significantly impacted along, yes. the, along the Southwest Florida coastline. That's entirely true. And Fun Size Jen would like to know, because we were, oh, when we were young, remember that. And uh, she wants to know, back in the 90s, Hurricane Andrew, is it, did, did it surpass that or align with that? Well, I know that in, and speaking from, from a little bit of experience, and, and I know Jessica had some personal experience with Andrew. Yeah. Uh, and, Jessica Lynn O'Keefe. Mm-hmm. Our, in, Who's in the Cape chat. And, and, and she says, I don't think so. However, the damage is pretty heartbreaking and devastating. Yeah. Um, part of the reason for Andrew's impact was the area that it hit. The mm-hmm. build, the building codes were, those buildings were built in the, in the 60s, 70s, 80s. The Miami-Dade hurricane codes that you hear about now, that our house that we are living in Mm -hmm. is built to that all new construction in Florida is built to came about as a result of hurricane Andrew. So the after action, the analysis of the damage, the what structures survived, what didn't, what best practices were, Mm -hmm. uh, Andrew became the, the template for a category five monster storm and, and what needed to be done engineering wise for, for, communities and structures. So Mm -hmm. the size of the storm, this one, I I don't know total area wise how it compared. I think that this one is technically larger with a larger wind field. Andrew may have had higher winds. This one came aground officially as a category four Mm -hmm. knocking on the door of category five, Mm -hmm. like within one or two miles an hour and allegedly gusts above or well into the category five range, meaning yeah. over 150 plus mile an hour winds. Um, so kind of hard to say. Yeah. I We went through Charlie in 2004 here, Hurricane Charlie, the entire storm was the size of, of Ian's eyewall. Yeah. And it was a much faster moving storm. It was very, it was, it moved very quickly as, as I recall. And uh, Jessica is saying that Fort Myers Beach Pine Island and Matt Lachey remind her of Andrew. Yeah. That, very, that. very horrific because she says she lost everything in Andrew, her home, uh, her car. She understands how they're feeling and it breaks her heart. And yet it's incredibly heartwarming to see how many people have come to aid this community and how strongly the community has come together. Yeah, we have we have seen in the last a uh, little over two weeks, um, just some absolute miracles in terms of survival from from people all over the barrier mm-hmm. islands. We have seen amazing shows of support and oh, yeah. caring for your fellow human being from charitable mm-hmm. organizations, yeah. the Red Cross, local churches, um, not so local churches that migrated here, set up- Indeed. Uh, tent cities and began answering the call to help people 
patch their roofs Mm -hmm. to get them through to, to get rid of debris. As of right now, just in our city in Cape Coral, the official count is 900,000 cubic yards of debris have been collected so far. It's just, and there are still areas of the city that are impassable. Mm -hmm. So this is a, a recovery and a rebuilding effort that's going to go on for the bulk of it will be done in months. And then you will have lingering bits of this for years. Oh yeah. And, and we've seen that in every storm that we've been through. And, and this is, I think my sixth in my life. And I think my fourth since being here, living here in Cape Coral. Um, so, and that, and that's not counting the tornado. The tornado is not named. Right. Right. Uh, so uh, like Lewis Black says, you don't, you know what you call a tornado? A tornado. Tornado. <laughs> you get the message. I don't even think this needed a name because it was so no devastating. Yeah. So, you know, our experience was, you know, where we live, um, the city that we live in is a peninsula city. I, you've heard us talk about it. You know, the highest point in the city, I think is 23 feet, something like that. Yes. We have no hills. We really so. don't. Uh, our house, I, I actually learned that our house is a little higher than I thought it was, but it mm. definitely didn't feel like it was high enough. No. Um, so we, we are at about 16 <clears throat> feet at our home Yes, above sea level. Mm-hmm. And the, um, you know, you always hear about the threat of storm surge and, and winds and tornadoes can spin off and, and all of those things. But for the majority of the time leading up to this storm, uh, the forecasters were all saying this storm was going to go to the panhandle and then it jogged a little bit to the east. Okay, it's going to go somewhere north of Tampa. And then it jogged a little to the east. Okay, it's going to go in around Tampa, then south of Tampa. Then um, I, I believe that they were. It was on late Monday, if I if my memory serves. And I apologize. I'm I may be a little we don't know foggy on it. We at don't this remember. Point. But uh, oh, over in the chat, we've got uh, we've got Josh on. In, on uh, YouTube, and uh, we've got Paul, Paul. Cottrell from Wicked Dolphin. Uh, Paul, welcome. Uh, and he's also Polly Barrels over on YouTube. Yes. Uh, welcome. We are d- uh, recording this live. Uh, oh, and we've got some uh, other folks chiming in. Reggie uh, Germain over on Facebook. Tuesday morning, it was still a Tampa storm. So yes. Southwest Florida didn't really get the warning until late. It and, was too late. And there comes a point living in Florida where you have to make that decision to go. And so often you don't decide to flee a storm because you are you don't want to leave for no reason. You, you don't want to leave if it's not going to hit. You know, there's a lot of prep that goes into you know, mm-hmm. prepping your house for a storm. We have big metal, big metal uh, storm shutters we put up and, and all of that. So by the time Southwest Florida got the the warning, it was a little little late because mm. people north of you were already on the interstate, and yes. now you're talking about p- the potential <clears throat> of being stuck on the interstate during a a very serious storm. So yeah, it's it's always difficult. Yes, it, it, it's a lot. There's a lot of calculus, and I'm and I'm, yeah. running, I'm talking a lot about it. I'm, no, I well, Jessica said that help has come amazingly quickly from many corners of the world. And yes. John Schroeder is saying, uh, thank you for doing the work that you do for the city and that you've done over the course of the time since and right before the storm doing 12 hour shifts every single day in a row until today. Well, until today. And, and Josh is saying, you know, what does our Florida family need? Well, um, that's the way this rendition nation is. There's a lot to unpack there. Yeah. Um, short answer is right now. Uh, we're great. Yes. We, we really are. And, and I'll, I'll, I'll get back to us specifically in a minute, but, um, thank you for saying that about me. I, I have an office job, even, even in this type of work, I was in the emergency operations center or the satellite location of it. Mm-hmm. I was indoors. The men and women that I work with that were working the 12 hour shifts, a lot of people don't understand that in a police response to a disaster like this, they go to what's called an Alpha Bravo shift. So half the shift is working regular response, 
half the shift is doing recovery and support. So mm. all the officers that are normally handling calls are doing their thing. And then the other half are doing traffic direction duties and whatever other um, site security. And you have to do a lot of things to support the mission going on. And you work 12 hours on 12 hours off and you go until you go until you can't or until you're done. And we were so fortunate uh, to have just an amazing group of officers doing their work. And I say officers, I also mean firefighters, EMS, um, our partners from non-government organizations that came in immediately. And then the cavalry came in the form of mutual aid um, from from other law enforcement and other um, government agencies from across the state. And we, we received tremendous support from those agencies uh, in yeah. from Broward and from the the Metro Dade area Miami that came over in fact mm-hmm. they they just deactivated the last Today? of our mutual aid 26 minutes ago oh so we as of right now as of uh, recording this show live here in our city uh, emergency or first responder operations have gone back to and I'm gonna, I'm using air quotes for the video normal. Um, we're, mm. we're back to a normal schedule, but yeah. everything here is far from normal at this point. So yeah. for us personally, so many agencies and so many areas working so hard, many, so many hours, Jessica says, it doesn't seem like thank you is enough. Well, it, it certainly blurs together. Yeah. Um, and, and Reggie over on Facebook is talking about his wife, Donna, who's the president of our of our Chamber of Commerce yes. and a friend of ours and friend of the show. She was in the mm-hmm. EOC for about seven days straight. Um, we have, you know, a, a, a wonderful representation and wonderful team in our emergency operations center here that helps coordinate business responses and mm-hmm. business recovery and assists yeah. government with being more, more efficient or mm-hmm. as, as efficient as possible. It is controlled chaos. And the thing about uh, an event like this is it's horrible at the, at the moment. And then we, we talked about it in our, our own private moments. Yes. It's, it sucks. Yes. And it sucks a little bit less each, each day. day. And, and that is exactly, I think how it's unfolded. Mm hmm. Now, the storm itself, um, <clears throat> you know, we ended up having to shelter in place here. Yeah. Um, she didn't want to be out of town without me. No. And I have to be here. That's hard. And that comes from experience of, well, we thought it was going to go somewhere else. But also, we thought, um, I just... It, We've been separated in storms before, yes. you, you and I. Yeah. And I just to to be on my own al- alone without you somewhere out of town away from family. I just didn't want to and the family wasn't evacuating. So Right. I That's felt the other like, consideration too. Right. We have additional family, so not being able to go. Right. So I felt like um Medically, medically, mm-hmm. they needed to stay. So I, I felt like I should stay here. Which makes total sense. Mm-hmm. The storm gets here. The first half of the storm. I I I worked the first half of the day of the storm. First from half. Here. <laughs> uh, once, once wind speeds get to 45 miles an hour, uh, emergency response to call ceases because it's unsafe yeah. for the, for uh, fire trucks, police cars, and ambulances to operate on the roads. Mm. We ended up sheltering in place here at the house. We had power uh, and internet for until till about two o'clock in the afternoon. Yeah, I would say. And during that whole time, the winds were getting over a hundred miles an hour. It was, it was pretty wild. And I was watching our back neighbor's house fly apart. I yes. have, and we've taken video of their fence, uh, their, their privacy fence flying apart. Pieces of their roof flying off. Now, their we would, screen for their pool. The, the screen didn't, yeah. Breaking the, down. Breaking down yep. completely. I, yeah. I mean, it was wild. And I s- said to Amy, I said, you know, our back neighbor may be the MVP of the storm because well, he built that house and it's, yeah. it's acting as a windbreak because at that point we hadn't lost a screen in the back. I could stand out on the back porch and watch it mm-hmm. and record. And, and I mean, it was, it was crazy. And, then we got the eye yeah, of the storm. That was... And that's always weird. 
the worst. Well, the eye, when it first comes after it, it calms down. Mm-hmm. So you had this moment of calm. I went out. We rescued a bunny. We did rescue we a had bunny. A tiny bunny in our yard. We totally rescued a bunny. <laughs> that was, it, it was first mama and three three baby bunnies. Then it was mama and two baby bunnies. Because I would go out in between rain bands trying to walk the dogs, knowing that we may be hours not being able to take them out when it got really bad. Yeah. Jessica says the backside of the storm was the most brutal. And, and then, hi, Dan Rams from the Cape Coral Running Group. Hello again. <laughs> so... I go back out the third time, third rain band, and there's just this little baby bunny, no mama around. I think mama was probably on her way back, but I couldn't take a chance. So I reached down and pick it up and it didn't run or fight. And I brought it in, put it in a cat carrier. And I'm like, we've got a, we, we've we, got a stowaway. We were, yeah, you were rinsing off the bunny. I was locating the cat carrier and lining it with, you know, like padding and paper towels water and, and- and carrots, because like, what else do you feed a rabbit? I mean, I don't carrots? know. Well, I mean, celery, maybe. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. So we do that, and then the second half of the storm starts up. Oh, that's a whole new ball game. That right there, um, that made me rethink life choices, all uh, of it, everything. the The level of destruction that 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 brought mm-hmm. um, to our own home, to mm-hmm. neighbors' homes, yeah, was pretty wicked um our roof really bad lost a big tree that we had out front um you you name it and then and then you know the volume of rain but then the thing that we and again been through six name storms um i i am one of those people that i have slept through category two hurricanes and don't blink then we got our, our first experience with storm surge. That was, I think, the scariest part for me. Oh, for me, 100%. Yeah. We've got video that was shared with us by our neighbor Neighbors. across the street. We're going to put it in the in, in our social media feed mm-hmm. uh, this week so you guys can get an idea of exactly what we had. But um, water got within... Ultimately, it got within about uh, four to six feet of our house, mm. uh, for, of our of our coming in the house, distance wise. It was probably it only needed to go up. I think maybe another um, another two feet, and it yeah. would have. It took out my work car. Uh, that got flooded out completely. Yes. The um, you had a we had a moment where we were like, okay, we may have to make a plan for finding some elevation. Mm-hmm. whether it's in this house, like up in the attic or getting out and getting the Jeep and going like off road and getting away from the water. It was, it was, that was, that was the moment. It was unreal. Mm. It Yes, it was. And we don't mean to rehash. No, no, no. We're, we, we you know, have had so many people asking questions and we just kind of wanted to recap everything yeah. kind of from our perspective. Yeah. Now, as bad as all that is, the water stopped about halfway under my Jeep. I was so thankful. It, I was so thankful. Like Darlene is saying that so scary. And it, it was, it really was. Yeah. It, um, yeah, that was, that was an attention getter for sure. Mm. And then the water receded. The next morning, we ended up going to sleep that evening. Um, no power. We had lost power in the house. Um, it was, that was a mess. Um, <laughs> we, we go to sleep that evening. We wake up. Uh, one of my coworkers comes to check on us. He was able to get out of his house. And that was great. And I said, yep, I'm, I'm trying to get into my car and yeah. go to work. I opened my car door and water, water. pours out. I said, everywhere. Oh, that's, that's probably not good. No, I tried. I actually tried vacuuming out my car with a shop vac. Didn't work. Um, so another coworker came by and I got a ride to work and that was, you know, how it all started. Yeah. Um, we were fortunate enough. Our generator died. Uh, our neighbor. And that was not fortunate. We, we lost our generator before the storm, right before the storm. Yeah. Yes. Uh, pro tip. If you have a generator, Check to make sure that the seams on the gas tank didn't split while it was in storage. Everybody's worried about putting gas in there and having gas in there too long. 
you have a bigger concern where if you have a seam split, you don't have any way to hold the gas at all. Mm. So, um, yeah, don't be like me, kids. John uh, says, stop, pour a beer. <laughs> well, we are going to do that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Good news, though. Our neighbors, Cliff and Betty, they had an extra oh, generator yes. they shared with us. Shout out to them. They were amazing. Our neighbors um, uh, right across the street, Dave and Sherry, they uh, they took photos and yeah. photos for us. They also helped feed us. Yes. Uh, yeah, well, they, they kept bringing over hot food. They were cooking stuff out of their fridge to, mm. to get it out. And they yeah. were like, here, we've made so much we can't eat it. So yeah. it they, was, had a whole, they, had, they had a whole house generator. Yeah. And they were able to cook, and it was just amazing. And then, you know, we were able to keep from losing our refrigerator. So we yeah. were very lucky in that and respect. What did Reggie say? Uh, he says, I've always said, I'm not scared of the wind, the surge. And this one proved we aren't immune to it. We are at nine and a half feet and missed getting flooded by inches. Mm. Glad you guys are okay. If you need anything, we're we're really good. Yeah, um, we are. Within, within a, uh, I want to say, what, three days? We ended up getting the first of our, our power back. No. No? No. How many days? <laughs> it was a lot of days. It was many days. I, it's been running together for me. How many days was yes. it? So the... the oh, three days into last week. Okay. It was like 10 days. Yes. Sorry. Yes. <laughs> I I am very sleep deprived and <laughs> I, I'm working on it. Uh, so, okay. It was three days into last week. So, yes. Yes. Uh, so, about 10 days. Yes. Whew. Yeah. Yeah, because we were having to you were having to go down to Naples to get gasoline. Yes, the lines here were crazy. Trip, it's great to see you too. Um, it uh, we uh, we wanted to because Cliff and Betty were so generous with sharing their their generator so that we could keep Our things fridge going go, and you know brew uh, coffee. And most importantly, that's you know how I feel about it. Everybody knows how I feel about coffee. So I got up at the, the crack of dawn and, and drove down to Naples. That was affected, but not so affected in the part just um, you, you had to come way down to exit 101. Yeah, right before, right before Alligator, Alligator Alley. Alley and going across to Miami and, and Fort Lauderdale and things like that. To, so I filled up gas for... Um, a neighbor who's in law enforcement, our, our neighbors, and it, it, um, I was so thankful that there were no lines and I have to shout out a former coworker and supervisor of mine, uh, from the dip crew, Steph, yes. who gave us that tip. Yeah. She said, come on down. It's pretty much business as usual mm -hmm. down here. Yeah. And Rhonda Lee said the gas lines were ridiculous up there for Fiona, two to four hours. I waited four hours. Um, yeah. I, I want to say that might have been day three that I went and, and was, waited in line. And then yeah. after that, you ended up going to Naples the following day. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah. My timeline is going to be for, all messed up. I should just defer to you. I I I got it for our neighbors, for us, and for uh, my mom and dad and uh, sister and brother in law. Yeah. So that was. And then they once they got things back to normal, they were like, "Hey, you guys got it pretty bad over there." Like, yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah, we yeah. did. Yeah. And it was. Happy early birthday. Here's a new generator. And yes, because they got they got uh, power and internet back. Uh, Fort Myers got it back much quicker. Much than quicker did. than we did. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, at least they're part of Fort they're Myers. Part. They're part I, of Fort Myers. I was going to say parts of Fort Myers still without traffic control. Yeah. It's, it's still kind of a mess over there. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Different approaches to, you know, managing yeah. traffic flow and, and mm -hmm. just a different road layout altogether, too. Right. So... Yeah, we got, what did we get power back? Like Friday night, super late, right? I think so. Something like that. And it was just glorious. And I was hoping that it would stay over the weekend. And it did successfully. Yeah. And then, we and then were, internet came. And then internet took its time and it's been up and down. Mm -hmm. uh, we were able to do a, a little live stream. Oh, Yeah. Finally, I, I think maybe days a, after a couple the storm. Of, a couple of days after the mm -hmm. storm, the the storms here took out Verizon's network completely. Yes, and yes. In taking their towers out, it puts it it messes up the other networks as well. 
Yeah. And they had to do some things on the back end. Verizon sent an army of mobile, um, mobile cell phone towers, got those deployed, and then um, they kind of rebalanced the network load. So we now have pretty reliable cell phone. The mobile data is still pretty terrible, but at least it's it's kind of usable. So yeah, yeah they they did a pretty amazing job, mm-hmm. and then and then the army of linemen. Oh my gosh. Arrived 40,000 linemen from all over the country arrived into Florida Mm -hmm. thousands here into Southwest Florida and the work that those men and women have been doing. It's it's, absolutely amazing. Yes. I I mean, you're seeing pictures from like, like LCEC and FPL Mm -hmm. and Duke energy and, and the list goes on. Mm -hmm. And these guys are out in, I mean, it's Florida and it's still kind of summerish here. So the weather, a little warm. the first two days after the storm was mercifully cooler, but then, but then it got back to normal. Mm-hmm. They're out there in, in, you know, these, these ridiculous temperatures, the standing water is gross. There was one photo where a line crew ended up uh, catching a Python no. and removing it from their work area so they could proceed on with what they were doing. And I don't mean it was a little Python. I mean, there were like six of them holding the snake. Yeah. Um, that's the kind of stuff these guys are dealing with. Plus alligators, plus, 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 you know, and that is crazy. Hey, uh, Amanda Napolitano is in the chat in hey, Amanda in, uh, Instagram. Yes. And I am wearing the shirt that I normally wear at Donna because we have not forgotten about the Donna 110, um, uh, mile a day challenge Yes, between now and, uh, the Donna Marathon weekend 2023 in February of 2023. So we, um, it will be the link in the show notes will be there to sign up for that. We're going to be a part of that. Shout out to Dawn of Dawn Be Joyful, who signed up and is on our team and doing that 110 mile a day challenge. Yes. For the Donna Foundation. Are we skipping so, to the running now? So, no, well, I mean, I saw Amanda and I want her to know that we appreciate the support and the encouragement from the D squad, from everybody's checked, everyone. Um, and uh, in Jacksonville, I mean, Andy and uh, Dr. Andy Sharp and Mike and um, Amanda and Babs and everybody in the Runcation Nation who's checked in with us. It just means a lot. And I does. want her to know that our hearts are still with the Donna Foundation, and we know that the Jacksonville training program is kicking off very shortly, I mm-hmm. think this weekend, and uh, we that is a light at the end of the tunnel where we're thinking about seeing so many from the Runcation Nation in February at the Donna Marathon weekend at the Gasparilla Distance Classic, and just uh, just that is a source of motivation for us to keep going in the cleanup and the recovery. Yeah. So, so yeah, we're going to get to running in a second because yes. uh, this all kind of ties in. It's been a, a long build, but we wanted to kind of bring everybody up to speed with what we've, what we've had here. So uh, house was damaged, no power, no electrical power or electrical came back. Internet finally came back. We actually have uh, our regular internet back in the house now. So that's way better than mobile data. Um, cell phones were terrible. I mean, you'd have been better off in some cases with two tin cans and a string uh, than trying to use your cell phone. You would send a text. It would fail. It would fail. It fail. Yes. And then, you know, six hours later, you get all those failed text messages. It was, it was nuts. Um, so we're, you know, all this happens it kind of starts to normalize a little bit. We start the cleanup process, or I should say Amy starts the cleanup process. I w- am working 12s. Amy is doing the all house is here too. of the work around the house. Yes. So she's cleaning. She's, she's keeping things you don't think about. If you get flooded, you definitely think about Heather. Hey, thank you. Oh. Um, if you get flooded, you absolutely think about mold and black yes, mold. Yes. If you don't get flooded, you still have to be concerned about it because the air is so damp around here. And if you don't have your air conditioner running and you open your windows to try to get some airflow, you're letting all this damp air in and you can still get mold, even if you didn't get uh, 
even if you didn't get flooded. So you, you just have to be mindful of this. A challenge so to work for it. Chasing, you know, she's going around here like a like a mad woman with uh with, with anything that's got bleach in it, keeping the house clean, mm-hmm. uh, doing all the yard work while I'm at work. Yes. And then uh, shout out to our our coworkers. Our we had teams of officers that were yes. hitting, hitting our own yes. houses patching roofs to make sure we were okay and and taking care of lawn debris. We also had some some charitable organizations and uh, fraternal organizations from law enforcement come by and through the neighborhood take care of us, take care of uh, friends of ours in the neighborhood who were mm-hmm. also retired law enforcement. They were, yes. they were wonderful. So, uh, to, so lucky. To do that. Yeah. And uh, so all that was going on. Um <laughs> So then you you kind of start getting back to normal and you want to start going out to run. Yeah, but... But when you go outside, you realize that, hey, Michelle, thank you. We're glad you guys are too. Yes. I know you guys got a bunch of damage. I'm sorry. Oh, <sighs> yeah. we hope the recovery is swift. Well, and when you go outside, you don't realize it at the time because you see all this flood water. Well, I realized that when I would step outside, I was getting hit with salt water like I was at the beach. And you don't think about it, but when the water is up like that, it's it's the forced water from the storm surge. It's the rain water. It's pools. It's porta potties. It's it's sewers. Thank you, Reggie. Septic tanks. So the waters flood and then they recede. And now you go out to run in the morning or you go walk the dogs in the morning, get ready for a run. And it smells like a porta potty on race day. Wow. In the neighborhood. Wow. And you're like, oh, really? Yeah. Okay. Maybe not today. No. So then, you know, you you do other things, Mm -hmm. yoga or, or, you know, weights or whatever. Then, you know, the next day and by about day three, you're, like, okay, that smells subsided, but now you've got all of the horticultural debris that's stacked up. And you have to watch for the power poles and things that are kind of leaning and, and there are some power lines crossing the street, you know, above, overhead. You just have to make sure that you're safe. You do. And you have to remember, too, that the road debris is really bad. Um the police department, I think we went through like 30 something tires in the first 24 hours. Oh, nails and tires and driving. Yes. Huge problem. And nails in feet when running also mm, really not, not good. good. You should avoid that. Not good. So, so we were very careful about getting out to run at all. Uh, and I don't think, I think was running through Wonderland is here. And, Jen. And we got popping the popcorn over here <gasps> on Katie. YouTube. Yay. So, We've and been, Babs is running a race in uh, South Carolina this weekend. So awesome! Have a great race. Yeah, so we we uh, we've been slow at getting back, uh, but we went out. I think you went out yesterday mm-hmm. for your first one, and then I yes. went out for my first one. Um, yeah, recovering from the hurricane, and yeah. uh, I mean, I think that the yard work was cross. I the all the yard work and the cleaning up around the house from the hurricane is cross training. Absolutely, was not hill work, but it was cross training. And I have aches and and pains in muscles I never knew from raking and from all the bending and rearranging and carrying and and, um, hauling of debris. Just wow. Yeah. That that is cross training. That is cross training. You know what's really disappointing? Disappointing was I, you know – we had a fantastic 14 and a half mile training run. We did. We had one in September right before everything went awry. Good word. Things. Things took a turn. Took a turn, yeah. you know, as we have recapped. But, um, oh, Amanda says they're moving the Donna offices and that's cross training. Yes. Lifting furniture, et cetera. Yes, for sure. And, uh, so, uh, so cross training, uh, we were very disappointed. Fun size Jen is still in the chat. I know we're going to see running through Wonderland, Jen, when we go to Wine and Dine because I don't think that's going to get canceled. But uh, we were so sad that the the Rock and Roll Clearwater Half Marathon was uh, canceled, and the option to defer was 
The default uh, was defer to next defer year. Defer to next year, which is what we left it as. Yes. But you could defer to other races in the rock and roll series like Nashville or things like thing areas like that. So And that race, they've had a hard time trying to get it off the ground. Yeah. They, they started it, then the pandemic COVID, happened, yeah, and now yeah. this. So hopefully next yeah. year is going to be the year. And while we're talking more about this, I'm just going to get started. We have a couple of beers here we're going to taste tonight on the show. Oh, yes. Uh, the first is from... The, hey, can I just say... <laughs> Before you say what it is, these are the beers that we were supposed to have and we put out so that people could buy to taste along with us virtually before the storm yes. in September. Yes. So these are the ones we're going to try and put out on the podcast feed as a review for fall beer. And the first one mm -hmm. is from our friends at Alltech Brewing. This is the we Kentucky pumpkin barrel ale yes uh we are huge fans of this brewery they do an amazing job with one of our regular favorites kentucky bourbon, bourbon barrel, barrel ale. ale and we're popping a brew that's right running through wonderland jen it's like let and just i have to say running through wonderland jen you are just uh kicking some ass pardon my french or is it french whatever uh on the tiktok and real videos let me just say um Ha! Darlene got these beers for our beer chat pre-hurricane. Yes. And she says they're still at home. She is in Detroit. She's not. Yes, I know. She's in Detroit with um, uh, JoJo and Fitz. Mm -hmm. And I saw the picture and it was just amazing and made me smile so wide for the first time in a long time. What feels like. A long it does time. feel like a very so. long time. It's been it's been a oh, very long almost three Have some three red weeks. wine for us, Amanda. Have a wonderful, wonderful night. You got to run. We know you're a busy woman. So, um, so she, like she said, she wouldn't drink them without us. We, sh I just didn't know that we would be here tonight. No, doing we had no it. idea. We had no idea. So you'll have to catch up when you get home. Yeah. Cheers here. <laughs> Cheers to you guys. Cheers to the Runcation Nation and everybody who has been just a lifeline for all of us. 100%. Mm. And somebody mentioned the fur babies. Yes. Oh, yeah. So, They're wonderful. So, okay. Funny, funny fur baby story. So, afternoon thunderstorms here in Florida, plenty of thunder and lightning, mm. really, really loud events. They, they can be torrential downpours. They can have a lot of wind. Indeed. Category four, almost a five monster storm comes through. You don't get a whole lot of thunder and lightning. No. You, you get some in the eye wall, but not a lot. Right. The dog that's normally Alyssa, terrified of, of these storms in the afternoons was perfectly fine with going out and walking in between rain Bands. bands. And the hurricane. And the hurricane force winds. That's no problem. He was totally cool with that. Wagging his tail, ready to rock and roll. Yeah. But let, let there be a little rumble of thunder in the distance without a named storm. And <sighs> more adventures. More adventures. This might be this might be Dave. Dave, is this you? Let us know. I don't know. Might be Dave and Sherry. If so, <gasps> we shouted you out. Yes. Thank you for the video and thank you for the the very tasty homemade meal yes. that kept us going during the storm. And okay, this beer, um, this is delicious. The Do you have a write-up on this to share? Uh, one moment, stand by. Vic the Mixer, welcome. Melissa O'Neill, welcome. Oh my, this one's a 10% ABV. I, That's I why do know we're that. splitting it? Yeah. Thanks, thank, thank, yes. Okay. You're getting your money's worth there. Let's see. Oh, it's Matt Moore. There. It's Matt Moore. We hey. know people with the last name Moore. We just don't know. So Matt Moore, and I believe that Matt Moore, in addition to Fun Size Jen, we will see at Wine and Dine, will we not? Mm, I'm very excited about these upcoming races that are not canceled. Yet. That um, give us motivation to train and keep us going with a light at the end of the tunnel. Yes. We really do need that right now. Yes. Uh, the light at the end of the tunnel I'm looking forward to is sleep this weekend oh gosh yes 12 hours for you at it's at a clip you know and i just i i don't what you and your coworkers have done to help the community and the restaurants and food trucks that have been out there we're gonna get to the food portion we're, we're out of order tonight it's not our normal format. i know we're all over the place but 
We, Amy's got a whole thing about the, the food trucks and the yes. restaurants around here. I will tell you about this beer, though, if you want. Yes, tell you everybody about this 10 beer. You have 10% ABV, released originally in 2013. This is Kentucky Pumpkin Barrel Ale. And its tasting notes are brown sugar, pumpkin, cinnamon, nutmeg, and pecan or pecan? Pecan. Pecan. So, I, I don't know. I have to ask. A barrel-aged brew with Kentucky-sourced pumpkin, richly spiced with cinnamon, nutmeg, and allspice. This robust, limited-release seasonal brew makes for a flavorful sipping beer to slowly warm up as the weather cools. That's a great description. Maybe not in Florida. Well, you know, the weather. Next month. Maybe. Next month. We're it starts hoping to get, for it. It gets really nice. We are we're hoping for it. This is very nice. Yeah, this is a a moderately carbonated, heavy body, very boozy beer here. But it's yeah, got, it is mar- moderately carbonated. So that's very yeah. But you've got all those notes. That mm-hmm. It's like liquid pumpkin pie, but it's not super sweet. No, it's not like a dessert beer. It's not. But this would also not be a good one with a meal. It's too heavy, in my opinion. It is heavy. So would you put it with a snack? Would you? Maybe a little something to snack on. Like- uh, well, good news. There are pairing suggestions from Lexington Brewing Company. I Del- said Alltech. Alltech owns Lexington. So, mm-hmm. yeah. They're together, and then they have distillery on the property. If you're ever in Kentucky, I highly recommend the tour. Yes. Mm. Delicious with roast beef, pork, and lamb, it says. Um, so basically Thanksgiving feast type stuff or moderately aged cheeses, a little cheese plate. I can see that. Try sweet apple pie, maple walnut cake or salted caramel cheesecake. Who can make that for us right immediately (laughs) and send it to us? Who can do that? Darlene can Can MacGyver a salted caramel cheesecake in her, in her hotel room with a paper clip and like whatever she could find in the. In the bathroom, like a, a lighter yeah. to melt things, or I don't know. <laughs> she is, she is that talented. She's a machine. Yes. So at any rate, that is the description of the first beer that we are having as part of the drink portion, which is woefully out of order. And we're also woefully over time because we've know. been talking and recapping so much. So real quick, yes. talk a little bit about. Um, We've had some amazing, we talked about the outpouring of support from all Mm -hmm. over the country and the world down here. Yes. You also wanted to feature some of the local restaurants and food trucks because of the amazing stuff they were doing. Well, let me just start out by saying I, I, we feature a lot of food trucks. Oh, yeah. From around the country when we can see them. A lot of the time we will go to local breweries and the the food trucks will just have phenomenal restaurant quality food. Absolutely. Amazing stuff. These people have hearts of gold as well. The brewers at breweries and the people who manage and create the delicious food coming out of food trucks around Southwest Florida via yum. We just recently covered. Yes. And I will tell you what they have done is They've gotten out on those islands that have been the hardest hit in um, and them and uh, Wonderland Cookie Dough and other food trucks. They've mentioned in their posts on Facebook and on social media. They are handing out water for free, cooking meals for free for those people in on the barrier islands and out at the beaches mm-hmm. that have been hit hardest. And there was a whole kind of kind of like a food truck park in a Publix parking lot on Cape Coral Parkway. Yeah. Right after the storm when nobody had power, water, working, anything, they were out there serving meals to to the community, and it was just amazing love for the community. So is Matt taking off? Matt's taking off. Okay. We will see you soon, sir. Thank you for dropping in. Um. And John Schroeder has poured Angel's Envy right now. Oh my! He went straight for the for the hard stuff. And uh, he is he was named the Storm Team Captain up there at Innisbrook. The, he managed 
everybody up there where yes, he was. He sure was. Yes. I also wanted to shout out one of our local breweries, um, Fort, Fort Myers, Myers Brewing. Brewing. Yes. You know, during the pandemic, they bought a food truck and they did that mm -hmm. because at that time, breweries were in this weird gray area yes. of legality of being able to operate. Mm -hmm. They were known for partnering with food trucks, but some food trucks were also not operating. So they were like, mm -hmm. we're going to buy our own, have our own kitchen. That way we are a restaurant and we can, we can operate. Fortunately, Tallahassee changed the laws and they didn't have to do that. Right. So they've had this asset sitting there mm -hmm. and in a pinch, they converted their food truck to a laundry truck and, yeah. went, and went out to the barrier islands and we're mm -hmm. doing la free laundry for people because you forget if it's first responders, if it's linemen, if it's, you know, EMS, fire, um, people who are just out there living, you have you don't have the ability to do your laundry. Right. Uh, you may not have any. You may only have the clothes that are on your back mm -hmm. and whatever you get through a Red Cross donation site. Right. Um, we were fortunate. They set up a first responder laundry for us in the city, but but those folks out there didn't have it. And Fort Myers Brink stepped up and did that. Amazing. That was incredible. Yeah. And the logistics that they go behind something like that, it just, it speaks very highly of the character of the people who are- Just volumes. Who are involved in these, these places. Out there. And like the the restaurants that donated food to keep the first responders going, like the Lodge in Fort Myers. The Lodge in Fort Myers, uh, I think it's the Kearns uh, Restaurant Group. Mm -hmm. uh, they are the owners of the Lodge. Mm -hmm. Um, I, I want to make sure I get this right. It's the lodge, it's Capone's, it's Ford's garage, mm -hmm. the Firestone. Um, I don't know. Question mark on that one, but, um, but a whole restaurant they, group, they brought bulk food, whole like racks of ribs and, and, uh, briskets and yes. came to the police department and were like here and we're like, Oh boy. Um, we, we, now we didn't have and the police department, we don't have the means to prepare it, but our city did have a food contractor come in and operate out of city hall. So we were able to take those donations over and they were, they looked at that and they said, Oh, we've got this. And they took it all and they prepared it and they were, were cranking out 3000 meals a day just at our city hall for the essential workers, mm -hmm. first responders and um, linemen or, or, or I'm sorry, first responders and essential workers within the city. Yeah. Just amazing. We don't employ our own linemen. That's why I, I didn't mean to say that, but there have been some food trucks in the community that are feeding the feeding linemen. linemen. Yes. Yeah. Like uh, there's an incredible waffle truck and whose name escapes me, but there's the Southwest Florida food truck depot on Facebook that, and you can see the postings of yeah. all of them getting down there and, sh and just, you know, feeding the people who are bringing us back to life. 100%. And it's amazing. So, uh, I just, a nice guy's pizza was. Uh, they got damaged. They got damaged, but they weren't down. They worked so hard. They brought back tarps for everybody. They were out of town. They were messaging us. And they messaged us and said, what do you need? We can bring it back because we're coming back into town after the storm. And they, they immediately got to work on nice guy's pizza, posting the picture, letting everybody know that they were still there and when they could reopen, even though it was only beverages and only outdoors, they did it. Yeah. And it and it brought the community together and gave them. And I think yesterday was the first day that uh, um, as we record this was the first day that they could welcome people back into the restaurant and offer food. And they said it was just amazing. The outpouring of support and love and stories and community that Anna runs on coffee. Congratulations on your Chicago marathon and persevering through a very tough race. Applause to you. Yes. Yes, absolutely. So, so, and, uh, we hope you're going to be at wine and dine because we want to catch up with you. And so. there's just, there's so many stories like this. Mm -hmm. We're not going to get to them all. We'll probably recount some more of uh, in the coming live weeks and months and, and lives yeah. and all of that. Mm -hmm. But 
you know, we wanted to take tonight and this episode to kind yes. of come back live, talk with you guys, you know, in, in the chats live mm -hmm. and get a recording out to let you know we're, we're, we're down. Um, Five years ago, we were down temporarily due With to Irma. Hurricane Irma. And it was the first year of the podcast, and we were we were unable to record for, I think, a week or two yeah. because of power and internet issues. Same thing. Same thing. But we came back, and we lasted for five years, and, and we're into six. And to know that our community out here, like... Uh, Main Street Miles Meg, like Darlene and Jojo, uh, Dean Gerber, um, Josh, Dean and Judy. And Josh, Josh has been checking in with us regularly on text all messages. The time, you know, all the time. All the time. Darlene. Darlene has been checking in with us. Jessica, Kelly, locally. When uh, we could. Mm -hmm. John, nonstop, even before the storm, just posting and sending out messages of love. We, we can't, it, 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 it is an emotional thing to say thank you. Yeah. It's it's a for everything that you've done to support us. Yeah. JD, and JD from the Extra Mile Podcast Group. We can't thank you enough for helping keep us fueled in terms of the generator and uh keep us running. And Dean's offer to run us uh gas or whatever else we need from, from Sebring and it was amazing. Uh yeah. Amazing. I, so I, but you know, a lot of people, so many people were asking and, and reaching out, and we absolutely just didn't have the ability because the networks were so bad to respond to, respond. to everybody. So I felt so horrible and guilty and bad. And so this is in this episode, I'm just anybody who reached out to us, we can't thank you enough. And your, your support, your encouragement, your in every single way possible, we can't thank you enough. And we, and we can't express how much it means to us. We really love you. I can't beat that. So I'm not going to try. Um, what this means is we're training for the next race. Yes. The next race for us is going to be the wine and dine half marathon and, or two course challenge in uh, Walt Disney world in November. We are going to be training for that one. And we are, uh, going to be back at it, uh, running around obstructions and horticultural debris, and hopefully no more fallen power lines. But um, that is where we're at right now. So it's a bit of a reset. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, we hope we're going to be able to make it through that challenge. I think we will. I'm very nervous about it. I think we'll be all right. So, but that's where we're at now. We're going to be back at the, uh, at the um, regular race training schedule this week. And hopefully, yeah. uh, well, barring the unforeseen, we will be back on a regular podcast release schedule as well. Yes, we have lots of, we have um, content to flash back to that we initially planned for the weeks around uh, the hurricane. So we have to put that out there. And uh, we have so much around wine and dine we want to share, so much around um, upcoming turkey trots and training uh, for the Donna and training for Gasparilla and seeing the Runcation Nation. We are so excited to bring all that to you and so excited that you're still here and with us. We can't thank you enough. So thank you so much for listening. For joining us on your long run, your short runs, your commute to work, or wherever you might be listening. I'm your host, Amy. And I'm your co-host, Dana. Stay safe and well, and we will accomplish, explore, and indulge with you really soon. <laughs>